I'm always in arguments with football guys not for not too long though about the, why and why. So why would you don't play football out there? Have you ever watched the beginning of a football game when the camera's behind the, the punter and all the linemen got their god darn feet that wide? That's how you the game that's when they we had three guys here at Ohio State at three years in a row, Terry Groin. They say they do all this flexibility work. I said, yeah, but you're, you're all weak. You know, the Boza brothers and then uh, Chase Young. Same injury. How do you get the same injury? That's not so good. Not when you're talking about, what, number one or two draft pick? Well, yeah. the, uh, where people get wrapped around the axles, they start looking at flexibility in terms of passive. And it's really active range of motion. Mm -hmm. And the only way that I found to ever really train active range of motion was under some form of heavy weight. And I explained to somebody one time, like lifting weights is like stretching with heavy ass weight on your back and being able to move through full ranges of motion under load and do it violently. Mm -hmm. Like there's no replicating that. And all the fucking uh, rotational uh, yoga and all the other stretching bullshit passive that you do isn't going to make you strong in those range of motions that you need it when you're most, you know, like got to generate the most force. So I'm always amazed when I watch these guys do all this stretching. And I'm like, what is passive fucking stretching doing for you? I want to know why they stretch so long and go on the field and get hurt. Like, uh, what, uh, you know, uh, Beckham or whatever in that game, he, he hurts his knee, there's no contact. And b because they don't train their calves and hamstrings. Well, he tore his ACL. Yeah, yeah. but if you've got strong hamstrings and calves, you will not turn. Yeah. I got medical books that says you can play. I, I tore mine, scored 920 pounds, I was 52. So I tore my ACL uh, sometime towards the end of my NFL career, and uh, we never even noticed. Yeah. It wasn't until I got my knee scoped, the doctor's like, you know, you don't have an ACL. And uh, he's like, I couldn't even tell you didn't have an ACL because your hamstrings were so thick. Exactly. Yeah. It's the key. But they, you know, you know, you're in this, you're in this, I don't, I, I write the books. I just write books and which I stay down there. Uh, but you, you see, training is like waves, like the ocean. It seems like you got a wave of good training, then you got a wave of bad training. <laughs> you know, no generation comes in. Right now, I've got to write an article. Tom wants me to write an article. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. My opinion on hit training, because I know it sucks. And you know where hit training came from? I don't want to tell you a whole lot. Well, no, it uh, Arthur Jones. Yeah, well, Arthur Jones, but I mean, also uh, um, uh wrote about it in Super Training. I mean, they showed circuits, and there was a GPP deal and Penn, base level of Penn fitness. State. Yeah, in Penn State. Oh, I mean, Penn, me, we used to get into it. All oh fuck! Ask him about the one set to failure on the on the hammer strength shit. I did uh, that stuff. It was fucking awful. Yeah, well, that's, that's what he did. It, it wasn't a training method. It was a, a, a business uh, um, mode model. He's going to take you in there, going to run you through all those machines and out the door, next guy in. Yep. And he did it by convincing you that Casey Vietor and all these guys got that big doing it. Yeah. And I'm going, like, you're out of your mind. I've had pro bodybuilders there. I don't like to work with them, but their way is stronger than you think they are. Especially some in the bench and, and the deadlift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, enormously strong. Yeah, I got to write about it. And it's, you know, 20% of our training is only a barbell. Squatting at bench, deadlift, good morning. 80% small exercise, concentrating on one particular muscle group. But you got to have one particular weakness. So we concentrate on that one particular weakness until it exceeds the next thing that we work on. That way we never give anything up. We're constantly working on like lower back and hamstring and triceps and you know, the assumptions that make you live big weights. 